What up, nerds? This is Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got a perfect score on the SAT and a perfect score on the ACT. And today I'm going to show you how to build and solve systems of linear equations. All right, y'all, systems of equations questions are all over both the SAT and the ACT. Now, they are asked in a bunch of different ways. Most of the time, you'll just be asked to solve a system that's been given to you. But sometimes, like here, you'll be asked to create the system yourself and then solve it. In my experience, questions that ask you to create the system yourself typically only involve linear equations. I've never seen a question on either the SAT or the ACT that requires you to set up a system or build a system yourself with equations of a higher order than linear. In other words, if you can set up a system of linear equations, if you're good at building them, you should be fine. So let's get a little bit of practice. How do we start? Step one is going to be define your variables and name them intuitively. Now, a lot of my students skip right past this step. They think it's effortless and easy to know what the variables are and what they mean. In my experience, so that's actually a recipe for disaster. You gotta make sure you name your variables intuitively. You gotta make sure you know exactly what they refer to. So step one is always going to be define your variables. Let's go ahead and take a look at this problem and see how that looks here. An online bookstore sells both paperback and hardback copies of a recently released novel. Each paperback copy costs $2 less than each hardback copy. If an order of three paperback copies and two hardback copies costs $29, how much does a paperback copy cost? So let's go ahead and define our variables and name them intuitively. Take a minute to think about what variables do you think we should use here? I think the variables we need are P and H. Now, let's think about what they mean. Is P the number of paperback copies this order contains? I don't think so. And in fact, that's an easy mistake to make. If you confuse P for being the number of paperback copies this order contains, you're gonna be in trouble. It's gonna be really hard to get this question right. So what does P represent then? Well, they tell us how many copies, how many paperback copies this order contains. We don't need a variable for that. Instead, what is there about paperback copies that we don't know? We don't know how much they cost. So. Let's say P is the price of a paperback copy. So P is the price of a paperback. Okay, awesome. What is H then? So keeping our naming consistent, let's say that H is the price of a hardback copy. Again, I don't think we need a variable to represent the quantity of hardback copies because they tell us two hardback copies were sold. So we can just say, H is the price of a hardback copy. Now, the second step in building and solving a system of equations is to translate the English sentences they gave us into mathematical equations that I can use to answer this question. So what did they tell us? It looks like they told us each paperback copy cost $2 less than each hardback copy. It sounds like then that the price of my paperback books, P, is or equals $2 less than the price of a hardback copy. The price of a hardback copy is H. And if the price of P is $2 less than that, then it is H minus two. In other words, the price of a paperback copy is the price of a hardback copy less $2. So I've now got one equation to begin with. What should my other equation be? Well, they tell me that we bought three paperback copies and two hardback copies and the cost was $29. But what do we do with that information? How does the total cost of the order of $29 help me solve this question? Here's how it will. I know that my total cost is gonna be $29. So I'm gonna set up an equation with my total cost on its right. Now on the left, I just have to come up with an expression that will allow me to calculate the total cost. And I already have my variables ready to go. I know that P is the price of a paperback novel. So, if P is the price of a paperback, I can multiply that by the number of paperback copies the order contains, three. If I multiply the price of a paperback times the quantity of paperbacks sold, that should give me the total expenditure, the total amount we spent on paperbacks, 3P. I can do the same thing with hardbacks. I know that the number of hardbacks we sold is two, and the price of a hardback is H. So I just take that H and I multiply it by two. So now I have an expression on the left-hand side of this equation for the total amount of money spent. I know that three times the number of paperbacks plus two times the number of hardbacks equals a total of $29. Now what do I do with this? I have two equations with two variables, so I should be able to solve for a specific value for each of those variables. 
What do they want to know? That's the next step. They're asking how much does a paperback copy cost? Because they want to know what a paperback copy costs, pro tip, I'm actually going to set up an equation H equals. I'm going to manipulate one of my equations to get H equals. And that way I can plug something in for H and get rid of H in the system. And that will allow me to easily solve for the price of a paperback. So how do I do that? I'm going to start with this equation and just add 2 to each side. When I add 2 to each side, what do I get? H equals P plus 2. H equals P plus 2. Now watch. I'll substitute that in to my bottom equation, 3P plus H. But I know H is the same as P plus 2. So I'll plug that in for H times 2 equals 29. So there we go. I now have an equation with the only unknown being P. I should be able to solve that to find the price of a paperback. Let's multiply this out. 3P plus P plus 2 onto 2 is going to be 2P plus 4 equals 29. 3P plus 2P is 5P. And I subtract 4 from each side and I get 25 on the right. It looks like 5P equals 25. Divide each side by 5. P equals 5. So what's the price of a paperback book? Looks like it's $5. So that's all I've got for you about how to build and solve systems of linear equations. Please don't forget to throw us a like if you found this video helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Experts YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video. Suggest a topic for our next video. Let us know what you want advice on from a two-time perfect score. We might feature your suggestion as the topic for our next video. There's also a coupon code in the description below that'll entitle you to discounts on all of our products on our website prepexpert.com. You can sign up for a course with myself or another instructor, or you can sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.